Without carbohydrates, your thyroid can't function. That's what we've been led to believe since 1976. So we're always told that you need to load up on those carbohydrates, it's gonna give you that cheat meal effect that's gonna rev up your thyroid so your metabolism is just burning hot. Well, that's not the case anymore. See, in this video, we're gonna talk about some science that shows that when carbohydrates are out of the equation, not even necessarily aggressively, but even just a little bit, it could potentially allow your metabolism to operate, well, more efficiently and consequently lead to better body composition results. So we'll cover all the science and you'll have a clear understanding of what's going on. First, make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then please do hit that bell icon so you never ever miss our daily videos. Let's talk really quick about what happens when you create thyroid hormone in your body. Thyroid hormone is your metabolism in a lot of ways, right? But here's what happens. Your pituitary gland in your brain has something called TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. So it secretes thyroid stimulating hormone. And that thyroid stimulating hormone stimulates the thyroid gland to produce something called T4, okay? This T4 then goes into the bloodstream and gets converted into T3. T3 is the active form of thyroid, and it's the one that we tend to focus on, but it's really just the end result. It's the full cascade we have to look at. So T3 is responsible for a large part of our metabolism at different organ levels. If T3 levels are low, it's an indicator that our metabolism is slow. If T3 levels are high, it's an indicator that our metabolism is high and we're losing weight, right? But that's not always the case. You see, in some studies, they found that even when the body weight is stable and calories are the same, if carbohydrates are removed, T3 levels drop, which is kind of odd, right? We see that, wait a minute, why when we reduce carbs does our T3 level drop even if our calories are high? Because normally, if you decrease your calories, yeah, then your metabolism will slow down, your T3 levels will slow down. But how come it's slowing down even when calories are neutral just when we remove carbohydrates? Well, let's investigate. So there's some other studies that find that even when T3 levels drop because of a restriction of carbohydrates, there's no change in physical performance and no change in the metabolic rate. What that means is that T3 levels are lower, but it's not affecting the metabolism. Ordinarily, in a calorie restrictive diet, T3 levels go lower and your metabolism just in tandem goes lower too, but not in the case of removing carbohydrates. So what's going on here? Well, there's a doctor named Dr. Stephen Finney who's done a lot of research in the world of low carb and thyroid. Now he hypothesizes that what's going on is you're getting more sensitive to the thyroid hormone, so you don't need to produce as much. So basically what that means is because your cells within your body can receive the T3 easier, the brain and liver and everything can kind of take a little bit of a vacation. They can say, hey, we don't need to produce as much because the cells are actually getting more efficient at utilizing the little bit that we're producing. Now, let me say something first. Low levels of T3 are actually good. Okay, yes, they can mean a slower metabolism, but they also mean longevity. A lot of longevity studies have proven that lower levels of T3 are actually really good and associated with good organ health and living for a long period of time. It's just important to provide your thyroid and provide your body with what it needs to effectively produce thyroid. Now, Dr. Finney took a look at 350 different patients of his across various studies. And if you look at the images on the screen, you can see that in every single one of these studies, there wasn't a single case of hypothyroidism. So these are all low carb studies where he's looked at pretty aggressive removal of carbohydrates. And yes, lower levels of T3, but no cases of hypothyroidism where the thyroid stimulating hormone is elevated, and I'll explain that in a second. So now we jump over to a study that was published in the journal Nutrition and Metabolism. This is where things get interesting. They put people on a low carb diet for four months, and yes, they saw a decrease in T3 once again, but zero change in the thyroid stimulating hormone. Now, thyroid stimulating hormone, remember, that's the hormone that tells the gland to produce thyroid. So imagine this, if you have a problem where you're not producing enough thyroid for your body's needs, it's going to tell the brain to produce more. Hey, we need more, we need more, we need more, we're having a problem here. So the brain will typically produce lots and lots and lots of thyroid stimulating hormone in an effort to produce more T3, but it does so to no avail. But in this particular case, we see a decrease in T3, but no increase in thyroid stimulating hormone. 
Now the other thing that we have to ask ourselves is, okay, is the liver not converting T4 into T3 very well? Well, we run into the same thing, right? If that was the case, we would see a big elevation in T4 because the liver would say, hey, man, I need more of this T4. I'm not able to convert it to T3 right now. It's not working. I need more, I need more so I can get the job done. But in this case, the liver is saying, hey, we're actually cool with just this lower amount of T3. These cells in the body, they're eating it up. They're fine, they're using it efficiently. You can chill on the T4. That's exactly what's happening. So before I get into this next study that is unpublished, and that's kind of the benefit of watching this channel is we have access to a lot of unpublished research, I do wanna say you still wanna take care of your thyroid. So there is a link down below to check out Thrive Market. I've assembled a thyroid support box with foods that I feel are good for the thyroid foods that are rich in selenium, iodine, things like that. So if you're looking at just taking care of your thyroid, you're doing a low carb diet, anything like that, I highly encourage you to check out Thrive Market. They are a big supporter of this channel and they make this channel possible, but they also extend special pricing and special opportunities to those that watch my channel. So if you're looking for pantry goods and things like that, cheaper than the grocery store, highly, highly, highly recommend that you check them out and take advantage using the link below after you watch this video. Okay, so there's a really cool doctor named Dr. Volek. He's done a lot of interesting research in the world of metabolic health, fasting, uh, the ketogenic diet, everything like that. So this is an unpublished uh, study, a little bit of research. He took a look at 14 overweight participants. He put them on a low carbohydrate diet for six weeks, and then the next six weeks, he put them on a low fat diet. Well, what's wild here is he, yes, saw a decrease in T3, but he saw no change in their resting energy expenditure. So he actually measured their resting energy expenditure to see, hey, is their metabolism itself changing, even though their T3 is lower? This just confirms what Dr. Stephen Finney was talking about. So what do we have to look at overall here? I think the conclusion that we draw is that carbohydrates aren't required for thyroid function. In fact, carbohydrates might be stressing our thyroid out a little bit, making it so that the thyroid is having to produce more. And another theory is, heck, maybe, just maybe, we require thyroid hormone simply to process carbohydrates alone. So just because we're seeing that increase in thyroid doesn't mean that it's associated with a faster metabolism because a percentage of that thyroid hormone that's secreted could hypothetically be allocated just to the metabolism of carbohydrates. That hasn't been proven directly in a study, but it also lines up with exactly what we're talking about, right? Anyhow, just some food for thought. I'll see you tomorrow.